Today, we're going to talk about what every reseller should be doing right now if you want to be successful in fourth quarter. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about what everybody should be doing right now, right this very second. This is a specific time of the year that most everything we do changes over just to address fourth quarter. Fourth quarter is huge for most people. With brick and mortar and traditional sales venues, that could be 70% of their business could just come from fourth quarter. So what we do at a given point, we literally cut off purchasing and all kinds of other things, unless it's some real good deal to center in on getting as much stuff up as we can. This is the time to list it. You can't wait till the end of November trying to get sales for Christmas or Thanksgiving or Halloween. Most of these sorts of events we've already had up or are continually listing them constantly over and over again. Anything that we get in that's tied to Halloween or tied to Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's, this is the busiest section of the year with the most holidays as well. So you've really got to hammer it now again because for most companies it's a huge chunk of their business. That comes just in the fourth quarter. Of course, it does depend on what you sell, your store specifics, but for most people, there are far more people online buying stuff for fourth quarter than any other time of the year. It's just a given with sales. And with this year's structure, with the pandemic, not as many stores opened up, restrictions in the whole works, online sales should be off the hook. They should be crazy. And if you've been paying any attention to online sales in general because of the pandemic, you'll see that they're up 50% in summer. That's a huge percentage jump year over last in just that short period of time. So the majority of people are shopping or have increased their shopping online this year. And I honestly feel that will continue through Christmas. Regardless of whether someone's going to buy something the rest of the year, most people do spend extra money just for Christmas. People have Christmas funds and things like that and save up through the year just to be able to buy good Christmas presents. That's just the basic structure of buying during fourth quarter. So as I said, we steer and change our business and cut off certain activities at certain times of the year. I have cutoff points and things like that that I look at and then decide from there where we are with what's going on. I've got a ton of merchandise that hasn't been touched online. We've had a ton of it in here, literally full with merchandise. So I'm not really buying any more at all. Even in the past when I really didn't want to buy, I still did buy things just because the sales were just too good to pass up. But at this point, most of my expense and time and labor and energy and employee hours needs to go into listing them. Now this Christmas, this fourth quarter could be the busiest ever in history because of what's going on. So I want to have as much merchandise in front of these amounts of people as possible. There'll be a huge amount, maybe again, as I said, a record amount of people shopping online. So the more items you have up, the more items you have to look at, the better you will do because there'll be more opportunities to sell things. And with what eBay did with the pricing structure, including a ton of zero insertion fee listings, ZIFs, I think they call them now, there's no reason not to list a whole bunch of stuff up. It's just your time. Now, one key factor of this and what we do every single year and what most all brick and mortars and traditional shopping venues do is they pay attention to supply and demand. In the summer, there's a lot of opportunities to buy a lot of things. So prices are really low in the summertime. People are out, people are all over the place. There's a bunch more shoppers usually in the summer out in the store and out in the real world for certain items than any other time of the year. Like right now with garage sales and things like that, estate sales. There's more in the summer every year than there is in the winter. In some areas of the country, there aren't any in the winter at all because of the temperatures outside. There's no garage sales and things like that. So the opportunity is less. So in the winter, the prices are way up because there's competition all over the place. Again, in the summer, there's a ton of it all over the place. So there's a ton of supply. The demand deems that the price goes down, so it's cheaper in the summer. So I always buy everything I can when it's cheap. 
If it's cheap, I'm going to buy it. And the summer is when I buy it. So the winter is designated for listing whatever I can. Anything I haven't listed already or mass bulk quantity of things that we can list. So we'll just line up hour after hour of just listing stuff. Get thousands of things up a week and roll it from there. As much as I can bombard eBay with or any other platform that I intend to list those items on. It's a big plus. And with eBay's search engine as well, it does reward for multiple actions for movement on your account, and listing does help with that too. Another consideration too, when you're listing constantly, listing as much as you can, you're going to sell a certain percentage of that right away. On average, if I list 100 items in a specific day, I sell at least, at least 3 to 5% of those every single day that I list them. So 100 one day, 100 the next day, 3 to 5% of everything I'm listing sells right away. Sometimes it's 10%, sometimes 15, 20%. It depends on how hot it is, what the items are. So it's a big plus as well. It's not just going to help you out in fourth quarter. It's going to help you out right now when you sell some items right after you list them. Now, I'm not just saying list a whole bunch of junk or just whatever you got laying around. Research it. Look up everything yourself. Know it yourself and know that it's worth listing. Know that you'll get at least a certain percentage of profit or a dollar amount out of something. Now, we don't like to list anything that's under $9.99. And those $9.99 items have to be something we've got pennies, maybe a dollar at most invested into, so I can still put some labor and still make some decent money profit-wise on it. Now, in some cases, items that I can just scan with the duplex scanner and drop them in with a stack and let it run through, I might go down to $7.99 if it's something that I know will sell. There's certain lines of postcards and things like that, certain action figures that aren't worth more than seven, eight. 10 bucks at the best, but they sell constantly because they're in high demand. They're in high demand, but there is a good share of them available. So the price isn't huge, but they sell really quickly. So again, I look at those factors when I decide some things. Not everything I sell is long tail items. Some of them, some of the cheaper items in some cases, as I said, I might buy a big bulk of something and have 50, 100 or something, but they may only be worth $7.99. Again, I didn't pay much for them, so it's not a big deal, and they'll sell fairly quickly, so the revenue will stream in from stuff like that. You just got to kind of know your business. Now, for us, we stage everything. We have a 90-day policy. We kind of look at things at a rotational basis. We list certain things certain times of the year. We list certain bulk items at certain times of the year. Again, it, it's all how you set up your business, but most every business out there should be keying in on listing as much as they can. I mean, literally hardworking as much as you can get in. Any extra hour, five minutes here, 10 minutes there, pop up a couple listings. Track your hours. Make sure you're not wasting time doing stuff that's really not helping your business and just bomb eBay, Amazon, Etsy, whatever site you're on with as much merchandise, good researched merchandise with history that should sell. Again, don't waste your time on the cheapo stuff that's not going to get you much profit. Don't waste your time on things that probably won't sell either. Invest your time wisely, list the best items and list as many of those items as you can. That is my take on what everybody should be doing right now if you want to be successful for fourth quarter. Before I sign off today, I just wanted to talk just a few minutes about Patreon. I had somebody leave a comment that I've never, ever shown or specifically talked about the page in all this time. Had to think about it, and, and I can't find a single case where I showed out my actual Patreon page. Now, I've had a Patreon page for like a uh, year and eight months or something like that. This is the page right here. This is what you would get. You're just simply going to Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com, and there's a link down actually in the description box, and then you type in the auction professor, and this is the page that you get. I've got three basic memberships in it, $1.99, $5, and $9.99. Everything comes with the $9.99. There is actually an annual option where you can save some money too. It's like getting more than a free month out of it if you do it that way. You can check out what's included with it. It's all stated on there. There's about me section which you can watch before you sign up, I do believe. And then all together there's 300 and like 30 different things that are posted on here. I have 208 videos. There's 65 written posts. There's polls. There's a dozen live streams. I'm doing another live stream within another week or so. I've got links to things, images posted, 
listed. You can see some of the titles. I go into pricing on paper. Um, I do some bolo videos on things like TSR. Um, I had some record lots that I was getting rid of wholesale. I mean, the list of things goes on and on. So anyway, this is what Patreon is. Um, it's got quite a few people in Patreon. You'll see your name if you subscribe or pay for any of the Patreon levels at the end of the video. So if you ever wondered about the names at the end of this video, right after this conversation here, they're all folks who are on or have been on and pledged an amount to help support the channel here through Patreon. I'd also like to thank all of those in Patreon who have supported the channel as well. It does mean a lot. It does help me to put out the content that you see on YouTube as well as the separate content I do put out here on Patreon. Well, there we have it then, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Nike, for those who are always on their game.